What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and welcome to some Marvel Avengers Alliance PvP. We're going to call this collection of Kurth inspired teams the Mindbenders. But before we begin I do want to send a special thank you to Agent Nadem. This video is brought to you in part by them, so let's hear it for them. Now as we get into our first team, this is going to be my favorite of the group. It just works very well and I even found myself using it to get my daily wins. So that kind of speaks for my confidence in this one. Now for every hero in this video, including my agent to some extent, we're just going to heavily debuff the opponents and mess with their heads. Plus we have quite a bit of exploit delirium going on so that will certainly work out to our advantage. We begin this fight with Enchantress spreading around debuffs, first with Magic Missiles, then Alluring Voice, followed by Charm, and a final Magic Missile. Even though this is only our first turn, our enemy's will is already becoming bent to our advantage. In fact, Null is already disoriented and smitten, so let's see what happens on his first turn. He takes a Cower proc during You're Not Worthy, and then with his attack, the enemy agent protects against it. After that, with Kurth, we can use Love Me to really mess with that enemy. It does pretty much come down to either Null or the Agent. And I'm going to go ahead with Null. There's just something incredibly pleasing about having him hit his own teammates with Fatal Fist. The Fatal Blow possibility probably has something to do with it. But alright, the enemy Kurth does hit our Enchantress with a Road to Ruin. However, on my Agent's turn, we're going to use the Neuro Purge. And then for the rest of our equipment we have the Amplified Rifle and the Psychotic Blade. The rifle of course can disorient the enemies and it has a chance to preemptively attack. The Psychotic Blade on the other hand actually has Exploits Delirium. This is going to come in extremely handy with these teams. So yes, we're actually going to try to keep the same loadout for all three teams. Right away we do manage to get a very nice hit on Null, but that blade can actually hit for a lot more damage. Then after the enemy agent uses a Blackest Void, we're already setting up for a huge level 9 from Enchantress. It really doesn't take her that long to set it up. Of course the glaring problem in this scenario is Kurth. She's unfortunately immune to psychic and delirium effects. That doesn't mean we're not going to try, we'll at least use some magic missiles on her. And then after that, we'll go ahead and use Charm on the agent, as well as Alluring Voice. By the way, I believe Smitten does work on Kurth, but not much else. But you know what, even with her resistance to Delirium, I defeated multiple teams of Null and Kurth with this exact setup. Plus, in this case, I'm just going to be happy taking out the Agent and Null in one fell swoop. As you can see, it has Exploits Attrition and Exploits Delirium. So here goes our Emerald Wave. And we do 38,000 damage to Null, non-crit. So with both of her teammates down, we're going to go ahead and speak Kurt's language. That's sheer violence. That means we're just going to punch her in the face. Oh, and bleeding does work on her as well. After she hits us, she'll take her bleed, and then we're going to counter with a stone breaker. So at this point, she only has 8,720 HP left. With my agent, we'll get two attacks this time because of momentary advantage. So first, we fire the amplified rifle at our own Kurth. Then I'm going to use the Light Fantastic, which I should have done earlier, and we'll fire a second shot at the enemy. This will at least do some damage, but it's nothing crazy impressive. After that, this is when I basically find out which debuffs will stick. We know that magic missiles could help out, so after we fire them, we'll use our two quick actions and just see what happens. Currently, she doesn't have a whole lot, but after we use a Luring Voice and Charm, like I said earlier, she is affected by Smitten, but that's it. So just know that you are very limited on what you can place debuff wise. But anyways, one more magic missile and then Curse should be able to knock her out. I'm just going to go ahead and use our level 1 stone breaker, and that should easily do enough. So now moving on to our second team up, we have some more exploits delirium, this time the living vampire Morbius. Now believe it or not, Morbius can actually dish out quite a bit of damage. He's a very formidable attacker. Plus he does have his Mesmerize as well, which can come in very handy. However, the reason I wouldn't use this as much as I would the last team, 
especially when it comes down to the actual PvP season, is because Morbius is an infiltrator and I would be afraid that a scrapper may take him out before he even gets a turn. That can potentially happen. If I really wanted to try them out for an extensive period though, then I would just switch my agent to the Bruiser Safeguard suit and have a protector for Morbius. That little change could make a big difference. Let's put it this way, it would definitely allow me to rest easier. Right away though, we can see how we are messing with the opponent's heads. And now with my agent, I'm going to use the Neuro Purge, followed by most likely the Psychotic Blade. And we are going to attack the enemy agent with that. Remember, it has Exploit Stellarium, so it does get a little bit of a damage boost. Oh, and I almost forgot, I'm using the Brain Freeze AI Soul on Morbius' level 6. So the equipped Psychic Attack applies Migraine and Chilled. It's a really nice bonus to have. Now the good news on Red Hulk's turn is he didn't use Bulwark, but he does use Gamma Bomb. So that's certainly not a great thing for us. Then with the Breaker of Stone, we could have used either one of our debuffs, but instead, we saw potential big numbers, and we went for it. Sadly, I forgot that the agent is a protector. The turn wasn't a complete waste though, because we do drop him below 5k. Then next up with Morbius, I'm going to go ahead and use Experimentation until we get back all our health. I'm using the Sympathetic E-ISO though, just in case you didn't recognize Generosity. After a few of those level 9s, we're going to attack the enemy agent with our level 1. That's Fly by Night. That ability has deadly crits and exploits delirium. And it easily takes him down. Next up on our hit list is going to be Beast. So with our agent I'll use Momentary Advantage, followed by the Amplified Rifle, and then the Psychotic Blade. I've seen the blade do 28k in PvP, unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to get that this time. I'll see if I can find that hit for maybe a later video. I was thinking of making a full Enchantress video, so we'll see about that. In this case, it looks like we're going to hit for 4,000, so really not that good. But hey, at least Pestilence Beast is going to protect us, and he takes Red Hulk's Bunker Buster. That still triggers Pyrophoric on our team, which is sad. But next up, we're going to use our level 1 on Beast. And this knocks him down quite a bit. It's also going to trigger our rune to explode, and this takes him down to 4354. Well, after some bleed damage. He'll gain back some health, but I think that my agent should be able to knock him out on his next turn. Before that though, we're going to mesmerize Red Hulk and set him up for a big fly by night. Just wait until you see what that ability is truly capable of. It's quite shocking. And now after we debuff the opponents with the improbability field, I'm going to finish off Beast with the Psychotic Blade. The enemy Red Hulk should be stunned, which means he has to skip his turn. And then with Kurth, the Breaker of Stone, we're going to use her level 9, Love Me. This is just to ensure that we get a nice Exploits Delirium fly by night. So here we go with Morbius and his level 1. Let's hope we crit. And the first hit does for 40,000 damage, with a follow up for 19,000 non-crit. Now that's an epic finish. That incredible hit leads us to our final team up, and I'll be honest, this is my least favorite of the three. But still, there's no denying that Loki does mess with the opponents. Like few other characters can. We begin the match like we often will with the Hall of Mirrors. And then after that, I'm going to use our level 1 throwing dagger on the enemy agent. We'll hit him with the Death Frost first, but we also have Soul Fire and Dark Void. Then on the evil agent's turn, he first uses the Neurotrope which we do have to look out for. And then he's going to use the Blackest Void. At least that part was predictable. Then with Kurth, rather than attacking, we're going to use Love Me on the enemy Null. He's up next, and like I've said many times before, I love him hitting someone with Fatal Fist. This includes himself. We finally end up getting a preemptive counter, but unfortunately it misses. However, since he attacks a Worthy, he's going to hit himself with Fatal Fist. Plus, here comes a counterattack Stonebreaker. So by far, Null came out the loser in that exchange. Then after shutting down the opponent's counters with the Neuro Purge, I'm going to go ahead and try to use the Psychotic Blade on the Breaker of Worlds. Sadly, we hit our own Loki instead. And it's even a crit. But hey, at least Pestilence Beast does the same thing to Null. 
minus the critical hit. But next up with Loki, we're going to use Trickster Seal, followed by our Dark Void Throwing Dagger. And although I debated hitting Null, I'm going to go after the enemy agent instead. So here comes another debuff. Okay, well we hit our own agent. And at this point, this match is just getting ridiculous. It may very well end up being who finishes their own teammates first. So let's just hope that's not us. And alright, the enemy uses the scroll. And I know they have that for Meteor Swarm, but it still feels odd having that on a Pestilence Beast team. And in keeping with the trend, he hits his own teammate with the rocket pistol. However, the secondary blast hits our team. Which that happens every time, and you saw the same thing happen with Pyrophoric. I think they need to change that, but it's a small thing, I suppose. Anyways, after Fear Me, Null's gonna hit our agent with Fatal Fists. And now on his turn, we do have momentary advantage. So with that, we can first use the Blackest Void, or maybe we'll use the rifle. No, make that the blade. Did I say the blade? Back to the rifle. So we'll hit the agent with the amplified rifle. And then after that, I'll use a psychotic blade. Then with the enemy Pestilence Beast up next, he's almost at full health. But he does get affected by a cower proc. So we'll gladly accept that. And then we'll use a fog of chaos on the enemy agent. Followed by a soul fire throwing dagger. I know this match is taking a while and honestly that's what I feel like happens in every Loki matchup. That's why I'm really not feeling this character right now. I'm just not that impressed. Really it all depends on what style you want to play. He does end up leading to the enemy agent's death. And then following a stone breaker, Pestilence Beast is nearly dead as well. Next the breaker of worlds will go down to dots. And then following a quick action and probability field, I'm going to use a Psychotic Blade to end this match. So at least the ending came pretty swiftly and almost out of nowhere. That's also going to lead us to the end of this video. So I want to thank you all for watching and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck and take care.